Yes, it's the case of the Red Goose murder. Another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Listen, Patsy, why do you have to come back to the office at this time of night? I just want to be sure that I finished everything before I left Scubby. With Nick away, it sort of leaves the responsibility on my shoulders. Okay, but shake it up, will you? Uh, the last show starts at 8.40 uh, and it's 8.20 now. This won't take but a minute, Scubby. I simply want to have everything in order for the morning. <sighs> that was a good feed we had, wasn't it? Mm, that sad was out of this world. Oh, doggone it. I knew we should have stayed away from this place. Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. Mr. Carter there? Uh, not at the moment. Who's calling, please? Art Bradley, manager of the Red Goose. When do you expect Mr. Carter? Uh, I can't say exactly. Uh, can I do something for you? I'm his assistant. No, maybe you could help me out. Well, I'd be glad to if I can. Suppose you tell me why you called. Well, it's like this. My girl singer has just died very suddenly. Oh. She was all right a half hour ago, but when I stopped in her room just now, she was slumped on the floor dead. Looks very odd to me. Well, why don't you call the police? Well, I was going to, but the police visiting my nightclub would hurt business. And she may not have been killed, so I wondered if Mr. Carter... You see, I met him the other evening at one of his lectures. Oh, I see. I wondered if he wouldn't come over and see what actually happened before I do anything further. If you have any suspicion that her death wasn't natural, Mr. Bradley, you'd better call the police. Yes, I suppose I had that. Uh, who should I call? Can you tell me? Uh... Oh, look, Mr. Bradley, leave it to me. I'll take care of it for you. Oh, well, that'll be fine. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now what? More trouble? Oh, not for us, Gubby. I have to call Sergeant Matheson. Then it's up for the movie. Oh, swell. <laughs> I thought for a minute we were going to miss that western. Oh, no, sir. Homicide. Sergeant Matheson. Oh, hello, Sergeant. This is Patsy. Oh, hiya, Patsy. What's up? Uh, Art Bradley, manager of the Red Goose on West 7th Street, says his girl singer is dead, and he thinks maybe she didn't die naturally. You better take a look and see what's what. Nick going over? Oh, uh, no. Nick's out of town for a few days. You'll uh, have to solve this alone, if you can. What do you mean, if I can? <laughs> I solved murder cases before you was born. Just because Nick has helped me out once or twice... I, I apologize, I... Sergeant. Happy hunting to you. Yeah. Bye. Come on, Patsy. We just got time to make it. Right with you, Scubby. Let's see how the movies do it. Just for a change. <laughs> Oh, this is just the way you found her, Bradley, huh? Nothing been touched? Nothing, Sergeant. You see, I opened the door to the dressing room to speak to her, and there she lay on the floor. I shut the door again and called Mr. Carter. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's murder, all right. You see this? That mark around her neck, you mean? Yeah, strangled with a fine cord or a wire, maybe. It's murder, sure. Only dead a few minutes, too. Not more than 15 or 20, I'd say. Uh, how did you happen to come to her dressing room, Bradley? Well, it's payday today, and I brought up the payroll sheet for her to sign. Yeah, I'd given her an envelope downstairs sometime before, but she hadn't signed for it. How much did she make? 150 a week. Hmm, good racket she was in. Made more than I do. Uh, that her handbag on the dressing table? Uh, yes, I think so. Ah, uh, notice it's open. Let's see if she's still got all that dough. Empty, by golly. Not a cent left in it. Hey, that must have been the motive for the killing. Yeah. Robbery. Uh-huh. Beautiful kid like that killed for a measly hundred and fifty bucks. Wait till I get my hands on the guy that did... Yes, you do, Sergeant. Well, Patsy, what are you doing here? And the demon reporter, Scubby Wilson. Hiya, Maddie. We were almost to the movies when Patsy's feminine curiosity got the better of her. She just couldn't stand the idea of a murder investigation going on without her being here to poke her nose in it. Uh-huh. Well, Patsy, now that you've poked your nose in, you can just poke it right out again. I don't need no help from you. What? Sergeant, I wasn't trying to help. I was just interested. Mm. Uh, is that where she killed, Sergeant? Yeah, strangled with a cord or a piece of wire. Oh. 150 bucks stolen out of her handbag. And no more questions, see? Yes, Sergeant. But please, may I just watch? Okay, okay. Just don't bother me. I won't. Uh, Bradley, how many rooms on this floor? Well, there are three rooms on the second floor, Sergeant. My office, this dressing room, and the dark room. All on this side of the building. Dark room? What's that for? Well, that's where the girl who takes the flashlights of customers in the club develops the pictures she takes. Oh. As soon as she gets three or four snaps, she comes up and makes prints for the customers to buy. Then she could have been in and out of this room any time. Well, yes. Yes, she could. I want to talk to her. Sure, sure. Hey, if all three rooms are on this side, 
They must all look out onto that roof next door. Yes, they do. The adjoining building is a one-story flat-roofed affair, same length as this one is. Uh-huh. Windows always kept open, are they? Oh, on hot nights like this, yes. You ever see anyone on that roof? Uh, from this club, I mean. No, I don't ever remember any of our people ever going out there. No reason why they... Oh, oh, uh, Marie, just a minute. Yes, Mr. Bradley. Uh, Sergeant, this is Marie, the girl who takes the pictures. You oh. said you wanted to talk to her. Yeah, I do. Uh, Marie, uh, when did you see this girl? This... Uh... Paula! What happened to her? Is she... Yes, Marie. She's dead. She's been killed. Oh, poor Paula. When did you see her last? What? It was just after her first show, maybe half an hour ago. Was she all right when you saw her? Oh, yes. She, she was as happy as anything. She came upstairs just as I finished printing my last batch of photos. I asked her for an autographed picture of herself. And she said that if I'd take one, she'd autograph it for me. You took one, did you? Yes, I snapped it right then. You developed it yet? No, I was just going to now. Uh-huh. Well, let me see it as soon as you get it done. Might get some ideas from it. I'll have it for you in ten minutes, officer. And may I watch you, Marie? I used to take pictures when I was a kid. Uh, I'm Patsy Bowen, Sergeant Matheson's assistant. Yeah, my assistant. My pain in the neck. Oh, well, Miss Bowen. I'm glad to have you. Did you ever develop your pictures when you took Oh, them? no, I didn't. Yeah, women. They give me a pain. Uh, Mr. Bradley, how many employees do you have here in the Red Goose? Why, there are 12 in the kitchen crew, seven in the orchestra, five front men in the lobby and inside, the check girl, flower girl, and Marie. I want to talk to them, all of them. Get them up here. Now, look, Sergeant, couldn't we sort of take it easy, just talk to them one at a time, kind of private-like? I don't want to upset the whole club. Give a club a bad name, you know. Oh, don't give it another thought, Mr. Bradley. Sergeant Matheson is the soul of discretion and the epitome of integrity. Hey, are you calling me names again? Oh, not at all, Matty. They were compliments, if you only knew it. Well, pipe down, will you? Okay, Bradley, I'll take it easy. But I want to talk to every one of them. Alone or together, I don't care. Now, come on, let's get started. Sergeant, yeah. i got some news for you. Yeah? What is it, Stubby? Your homicide squad is all through. Just left. Oh, some news. That helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you finished your checkup? Yeah. yeah, we've accounted for all but two waiters and one of the front men. And all three of them have been with me for years. They can't be mixed up in this. Who says they can't? Anybody could be mixed up in it. But we'll let them go for now. I want to ask that Marie a few questions. She's the one nobody can check up on. Let's go back up and see what she's got to say for herself. If you don't mind, Sergeant, I'll stay down here. You two go right ahead. Ask her anything. All right. Come on, Scully. Right with you, Matty, old boy. Bradley says she only makes 35 bucks a week. What she can get out of the customers. She could have needed that money. Oh, she seems like a nice kid, Matty. I don't think she can You two? When will you guys learn that appearances don't mean a thing? Oh, there you are. Oh, Look for you. Marie's been waiting to show you the picture she took of Paula. Here it is, officer. Yeah. And just think, she'll never autograph it for me now. Uh, looks happy enough. And look at this one, Sergeant. What? That's the picture Marie took while Paula was singing her last number. See her in the background? Yeah. And see whose picture it is. Hey, that's all worth Van Keppel, the millionaire playboy. Uh-huh. Does he come here often? Oh, about once a month, and always with a different girl. Blonde this time. He always gets his picture taken, too, and he's always good for a swell tip. Marie, suppose you and me have a little talk. Now? Yeah. Oh, I have to go down and deliver these pictures before the customers leave. Okay, but make it snappy. Mm. Uh, I'll go with you, just in case. In case of what? Just in case. Wasn't Marie nice, Cubby? She gave me extra copies of the last batch of pictures for my scrapbook. Patsy, uh, let me see that picture of Ann Keppel again. Well, sure, Cubby. Ah. Uh... It's a good one, isn't it? Mm. Patsy, how many men do you see in the orchestra of this picture? Huh? Oh, gee, Scubby, they're so far in the background, it's hard to tell. Well, look closely. Five, six. Six? Why? Well, Bradley told us there were seven men in the band. The picture shows only six. Huh? I wonder where the other one was. Uh, how are you folks oh. making out? Find anything yet? Oh, uh, Mr. Bradley, you said there were seven men in the band. Yes. Well, this picture taken during the first show tonight shows only six. That's so. Well, let's see. Yes, the guitar player, Steve Dawson, isn't there. See, that's funny. Any idea why he wasn't there when this picture was snapped? No, no, I know he was there when the show started, and he's there now. I saw him as I came up. 
I don't understand it. Scubby. Huh? Do you suppose he could have... Oh, probably, oh. Uh, Marie tells me this was Paula's last night here. She was going to work for another club beginning tomorrow night. Mm, yes, yes, that's true. Well, how come you didn't tell me about that before? I guess it just slipped my mind, Sergeant. Why was she leaving? Well, she got a better job. More money than I could pay her. That's all. Sergeant, while Paula was singing her last number, the guitar player was missing from the band. Do you suppose he could have come up here and, and done this? A guitar player, huh? Hey, Bradley, do these musicians have a dressing room here anywhere? Yes, yes, they do, on the third floor. They keep their stuff in lockers up there. How much longer are they going to be playing? Let me see, it's 9.10 now. They break at 9.30. Uh-huh, so we got 20 minutes. Let's have a look at this guitar player's locker. Maybe he knows something about this. Which one is this uh, Steve's locker? It's the third one from the left. He's got his name on it. Good. Oh, not locked. That helps. No, nothing in this old jacket. Just the racing form. Hey, what's that written on it? Huh? Oh, Central 8740, Mike. That's probably his bookmaker. Yeah, probably. These boys play the horses pretty heavily, I understand. Oh, Yeah. Then the Steve could need money, maybe, if the nags weren't running for it. Anything else there, Sergeant? No, Patsy, only this old guitar case. Hmm, and that's empty. Gosh, they use nice velvet for the lining, don't they? Well, maybe it was nice once, but it's pretty well shot now, Patsy. Oh, yes. Look at this big tear in it. It's... Oh, Sergeant, look at this. What? Money. Hidden in the lining. Right. Seven twenties and a ten. Say, that's what I paid Paula tonight. What? So Steve took it, but... Well, why did he have to kill her to get it? He could have gotten it without that. Well, we don't know that he did kill her, Mr. Bradley. The guy that got the money is the guy that did the killing, according to my book. Hey, Bradley, get Steve Dawson up here. We'll see if he can get out of this. Certainly, Sergeant. I'll have him meet you in Paula's room right after the band breaks for intermission. And you can bet I'll keep my eye on him until then. Uh, Mr. Bradley, do you have a phone we could use? Yes, of course. There's one in my office. In the room right next to Paula. Thanks. Come with me, Scubby. Yes. I've got a job for you. Anywhere with you, beautiful. Just leave the way. You say you want me to call this number we found on Steve's racing form? Right, Scotty. And ask for Mike. Oh, do you want me to ask him anything special? Oh, no, just say it's Steve Dawson calling. Mm -hmm. Then stall around and see if maybe he won't let something slip about Steve's finances. Okay, what can we lose? Here goes. Right. Eight, seven. Oh, I wish I knew what this Steve's voice sounds like. Well, just talk a little husky, as if it were a bad connection. Michael never know the difference, I hope. The Purple Pig, good evening. Oh, hello. Is Mike there? This is Mike. Who's talking? Steve Dawson. Oh, yeah, Dawson. You got the money ready for me? Well, I've got part of it. Part of it? Hey, listen, you know what I told you. You have it all when I call for it tonight or else... The whole 300 bucks you borrowed, and the $100 interest for the two weeks you had it. Well, isn't there some way I can let you have part of it now and the rest Got of it? Got the stall Dawson. 400 smackers in a bunch by 1 o'clock tonight for trouble. And I mean trouble. Okay, Mike. Goodbye. So Steve did need money. He sure did. $400 by 1 o'clock tonight and no fooling around either. So Steve might have needed that money so bad he'd be willing to kill Paula to get it. Well, it sure looks that way from where I sit. I wonder Scubby, if... Scubby, what's that on the floor over under the window? Huh? Oh. Looks like tar. Tar? Yeah. Tar off somebody's heel. Maybe somebody was out on the roof and got some on a shoe. Mr. Bradley said nobody ever went out there. But look here. Here's a smudge on the windowsill, too, Scubby. Do you suppose... Have you got a flashlight, Patsy? Yeah, my, my swirl one's here in my bag. I Quiet. think I'll have a look at the roof outside this window. <laughs> there might be footprints or something. If you're going out there, I am, too. Give me a hand. Okay, beautiful. Here. Easy now. There you are. Hey. Tar on this roof is soft, isn't it? Yeah, tar roofs generally get that way in warm days. No, I don't see any prints here anyway. Mm -mm. Well, that doesn't prove anything, of course. Soft tar wouldn't hold prints very well. Uh, Scubby, this fireplace must fire escape. Oh, I'm getting all mixed up. Must be the one that goes up to the musician's locker room. Well, it probably is. I remember seeing one when we were up there before. Uh, 
Is Paula's body still in the room? No, they took it away after the homicide boys finished their investigation. Oh, I'm glad of that. I don't... Oh. What's the matter? I tripped over something. Caught my toe in it. Well, there's nothing here, Patsy. Oh, wait. Huh? Ah, here's an old guitar string. Maybe you tripped on that. An old guitar string? And Steve plays the guitar. Funny, isn't it? How do you mean funny? The sergeant says Paula was choked with a cord or a piece of wire. Of course. And finding this guitar string here is no coincidence at all at all. I wonder. What do you mean, I wonder? Huh? Oh, I don't know, Scubby, but that's what Nick always says when he's not sure of something. Oh, his master's voice, huh? Uh, something like that. Uh-huh. I'm just trying to think the way Nick would do it if he were here. Oh, I wish he were here, too. Oh, I don't know. It looks pretty open and shut to me. I know it does, but that's always the time Nick says to... Scubby. There's one of the musicians just coming into Paula's room. That must be Steve Dawson. Yeah, come on. I want to hear what he has to say. You want me, Sergeant? Yeah, come on in. Have a chair. Uh, Mind if we join you, Sergeant? For the love of Pete, what are you two doing out there on the roof? Oh, just looking at the stars, that's all. Do you mind if we come in? I don't mind what you do so long as you don't get in my way. Thanks. Help me up, Scubby. All right, here you are. (laughs) Now, easy. Watch the sill. Uh, uh, (laughs) Oh, thanks, Scubby. Uh, won't you come in, too, Mr. Wilson? Oh, delighted, Miss Bowen. So kind of you to offer me. Will you two ever stop clowning? This is a murder case. Murder? What have I got to do with a murder? Everything, if I ain't mistaken, Dawson. Where were you at about 8 o'clock tonight? 8 o'clock? Yeah. Oh, playing with the band, same as always. That's so. Patsy, where's that picture you had? Here it is, Sergeant. Thanks. Now, and Steve... Show me which one in this picture is you. Why, uh... I don't seem to be there. Uh, when was this taken? During Paula's last number in the first show tonight. Now, where were you? Oh, yeah, I I remember now. I I was late coming in. Mr. Bradley said you were there when the show opened. Huh? Oh, uh... (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I had to step out for a minute. You need money pretty bad, don't you? Money? Yeah. No, I just got paid tonight. I got plenty. You didn't get paid enough to repay the loan Mike made you. 300 bucks plus 100 interest. Hey, what's that? Where did you find that out? Mike told us. Mike? What do you know about Mike? And he's calling for it at 1 o'clock tonight, isn't he? I don't know what you're talking about. No? Then why did you kill Paula Windsor tonight and then swipe $150 from her purse? And don't try to lie out of it. We found the money in that old guitar case in your locker. I didn't kill her. I swear it. Sergeant, we found this on the roof just outside the window. What's that? A string for a fiddle or something. So what? Could be a guitar string, Maddie. What? That settles it, Dawson. You saw Bradley give Paula her salary earlier tonight, so you sneaked off the bandstand during her last number, came up to her room, and tried to sneak her purse. She caught you, and you killed her. No, I didn't kill her. I didn't. You strangled her with a guitar string you happened to have in your pocket and threw it out the window. I didn't kill her. She wasn't even in the room when I took the money. Oh, so you admit you stole the money. Yeah. Yes, I stole it, but I didn't kill her. She was just finishing her song when... When I got back downstairs. No good, Dawson. If you can make a jury believe that, you're a better man than I think you are. But I tell you, I didn't kill Look here, Scott. I took the money. Here's a slip of paper on her dressing table with that same number on it that we just called. C E eight seven four O. I wonder what she was doing with that. Playing the horses, maybe. I doubt it. Sergeant, yes. may I ask Mr. Dawson a question? Oh, you again. All right, ask it. And let me get out of here. Uh, Mr. Dawson, what did you and Paula have in common about the purple pig? Nothing. Mike is the manager there, and he's my bookie. Paula was supposed to start singing there tomorrow night. Mike met her here when when he came over once to see me and gave her a job. That's all. So that's where she was going. Yeah. Bradley was all burned up about it, but Mike offered her more than Bradley did, so she gave notice. Come on, Dawson. You and I, you and I have a date at headquarters. Look, Sergeant. I'm I... booking you for robbery and possible murder. Now hold out your hand. I got a bracelet for it. But I tell you, I, I just you don't... tell me don't count. <clears throat> Ah. So long, Miss Patsy Carter. If you pick up anything I missed, uh, give me a ring. I'm always happy to hear from you. Why, thank you, Sergeant. Well, Scubby, what do you think? I think if I killed a girl with a guitar string, I'd never throw it out the window where it would be found first thing. Well, that's the way I feel. And it seems to me that if Paula did catch Steve Dawson kiss stealing her money... He wouldn't be likely to go fishing around in his pockets to see if he had an old guitar string he could kill her with. Gosh, you're right, Patsy. He'd more likely strangle her with his bare hands. You know, Scubby, 
I think the murder had nothing to do with the robbery. I think whoever killed Paula did it deliberately and used the guitar string to throw suspicion on Steve Dawson. Which would account for his leaving it right outside where it would be sure to be found. Uh And I noticed another thing, too, Scubby, that makes me think Dawson didn't kill her. It's not proof, but it's something to think about. Yeah, what's that? Well, well, when I saw Paula's body, I noticed that she had unzipped her dress as if she were going to take it off. Uh And her shoes were off, and one of her stockings was unfastened. Which means she'd been in her room long enough to start changing her costume. Good girl. And if she'd been leaning over and fastening her stockings, the killer could have crept up behind her without being seen. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. Oh, poor kid. Just look at this picture of Heather Marie took tonight. She's laughing and looks as if she didn't have... Copy. Huh? Look at this picture. Look at the mirror. Hey, there's the figure of a man reflected in the mirror. Huh? From the angle at which the picture was taken... He must have been standing on the roof just outside her window. Well, he probably thought he couldn't be seen, but the camera caught him in the mirror. Oh, it isn't plain enough to make out who it is. No, the picture doesn't show him very plainly. But it's definitely a man in a black coat, and the musicians wear white. So it's not the guitar player. Scubby, this man has a flower in his buttonhole. It's the right buttonhole instead of the left, the way most men wear them. Hey, let's ask Bradley. Maybe he'll be able to recognize who it is. Right, Scubby, come on. We'll show Sergeant Matheson yet. Uh, Miss Bradley? Yes? Uh, Miss Bradley, we've got something to show you. Can we go somewhere where it won't be so noisy? Yes, yes. Suppose you go right in here. With the door closed, you can at least hear yourself think. Ah, yes, this is better. Now, what have you found that would interest me? And Mr. Bradley, this picture was taken this evening in Paula's room right after the first show. Oh, yes, I remember Marie saying that she took one. If you look in the mirror, you can see the reflection of a man standing outside her window on the roof. What? Yes. Yes, I see. Hey, it's a pretty pity it isn't a better picture of him so he could recognize who it is. Mr. Bradley, have you ever been out on the roof outside your office? What? No, I never go out there. Then how do you suppose the spot of root tar got on the rug in your office? I wouldn't have the it least... It probably idea. came off your shoe, Mr. Bradley. I see there's still some tar on the heel. But I didn't... Your right heel. Say, look here, are you implying that I killed Paula? I am. I didn't realize it until I saw you again just now. But you wear your flower in your right lapel. Practically no one does that. You're a pair of idiots. Why should I kill Paula? I had no motive to do a thing like that. I don't understand about the motive part either, Mr. Bradley, but I'm sure you killed her. Now, see here. Just because I happen to be standing outside Paula's window when Marie snapped that picture doesn't prove that I killed her. Just went out for some air and then went back to my office. She was alive the last time I saw her. You've forgotten one thing, Mr. Bradley. Your fingerprints are on the guitar string you strangled her with. All right, so I killed her. What are you two going to do about it? I'll have you two taken care of so fast. Sit you down, e- Mr. Bradley. You can't scare me with that little pop gun. Don't kid yourself, Mr. Bradley. Patsy knows how to use that gun, and she will if she has to. And a twenty-two makes just as good a hole in a man's heart as a forty-five does if it's aimed right the way Patsy aims. Thank you, Scubby. Now, will you sit down, Mr. Bradley? Now, Scubby, if you'll call Sergeant Matheson, he can put both the robber and the killer in the same cell. You mean you're going to be at that typewriter for another hour yet? Well, I'm sorry, Scubby, but I have to have a full report ready for Nick when he comes back. Uh, and I want to get it down in black and white while it's still fresh in my mind. Okay, okay, I quit. I'm going home. I'll see you again sometime, I hope. Why, well, I hope so, Scubby. Give me a ring sometime when you're free. Oh, darn you, Patsy Bone. If I wasn't in love with you, I'd ring your neck. Oh, good night, Scubby, dear. Good night. Poor Scubby. Let's see. Where was I? Oh, yes. Nick Carter's office. Patsy Bowen speaking. This is Manny, Patsy. Oh. 
I just wanted to tell you, Bradley made a full confession. He did? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I'll put that in my report, too. Oh, uh, what'd he say? He said he planned to kill Paula tonight, so he waited on the roof outside her window for her to come back from the floor show. Uh-huh. It was while he was standing out there that he saw Steve Dawson swipe the money out of her purse. Oh. Well, that gave him the idea that he could have a perfect alibi by making Steve the goat for the killing as well as the robbery. <laughs> So he went up the fire escape to the musician's room, found an old guitar string Steve had thrown out, and got back outside Paula's window just in time to see Marie snap her picture. I see. And then, while she was changing her clothes, he crept up behind her and strangled her oh. and threw the guitar string out on the roof where it would be found by the police. Or by someone else. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, did he say what his motive was? Yeah. He loved Paula, but she turned him down cold. Oh. He discovered her, you see. Gave her her first oh. job. He felt she owed him something, but she told him to his face that he had done nothing for her and that she was leaving him for a better job with a better man. Oh. Well, that made him so mad, that and the fact that he really loved her desperately, that he decided if he couldn't have her, nobody else was going to. Oh, the poor guy. Love is an awful thing sometimes. Yeah. <sighs> Especially if it's not returned. Yeah, but look, Patsy, yeah. there's one thing I don't understand. You said you told him his fingerprints were on the guitar string. Now, what was the idea of that? Well, Nick always has something to clinch the case with, so I happen to think of that. But you ought to know a guitar string wouldn't take any fingerprints. Well, sure, Sergeant, I knew it. But Mr. Bradley didn't. Patsy, in the absence of Nick, I suppose I'll have to get my hints on next week's show from you. How about it? I sure can do, Carl. The case started when both Vince O'Neill and Otto Lerner found they were married to the same girl. Hmm. What did Nick do about that? Well, he started out to find the girl and straighten things out, if he could. And he found her, I suppose, knowing Nick. Oh, yes, he did. But when he located her finally, she could no longer give him any information. She'd been using a new jar of cold cream and taking a bath. Well... What did that have to do with it? Why, everything. That and the fight on the train. Yeah. All right, all right. What's <laughs> the name of the story? We call it The Case of the Extra Husband. Carter, Master Detective, which is produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Pictured stories of Nick Carter appear in every issue of the Shadow Comics. In the broadcasts of Nick Carter, Master Detective, Lon Clark is starred as Nick, Charlotte Mansum is featured as Patsy, Maddie is played by Ed Latimer, Scubby by John Kane. Original music is played by George Wright, script is by Jock McGregor. Any resemblance in these programs to actual persons, living or dead, or to actual places is purely coincidental. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented over most of these mutual stations each week at the same time. This is Carl Caruso saying, so long until next week. Auctions are exciting, but we've never heard of a public auction where the bidding went up, 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 to murder. There's your promise of thrilling mystery entertainment again tomorrow night over these mutual stations on Bulldog Drummond's case called Upholstered for Murder. That's Bulldog Drummond, Mondays on Mutual. This program was heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>